Before a single shot was fired over Europe, Alexander Kartveli had already decided how many pilots would come back alive. His engineering choices were made long before combat, but their consequences appeared every time a damaged P-47 crossed back over friendly lines. This is the story of the engineer who understood that in modern war, endurance could matter more than speed. Alexander Kartveli was born on September 9th, 1896, in Tbilisi, then part of the Russian Empire, modern-day Georgia. He grew up in a region shaped by political instability, industrial transition, and limited technological infrastructure. His early environment was not centred on aviation, but on mechanical and engineering fundamentals at a time when powered flight itself was still emerging. Kartveli pursued technical education in engineering during the early 20th century, focusing on mechanical systems and applied design rather than abstract theory. His studies coincided with the rapid development of aviation during and after World War I, when aircraft design shifted from experimental prototypes to practical military tools. This period shaped Kartveli's understanding that engineering decisions had immediate consequences for reliability and survivability. Following political upheaval in Eastern Europe, Kartveli emigrated to the United States in the 1920s. Like many engineers of his generation, he arrived in an American industrial environment that prioritised production, testing and operational performance over academic prestige. Aviation in the United States was expanding rapidly, driven by both commercial demand and military interest. Kartveli began working in the American aviation industry at a time when aircraft design was still evolving through trial, failure and incremental improvement. He joined Seversky Aircraft, a company focused on advanced military fighters. Within this environment, Kartveli worked on high performance airframes and propulsion integration, gaining experience in balancing aerodynamic efficiency with structural strength. Seversky Aircraft later became Republic Aviation, where Kartveli assumed a central role as chief designer. His responsibilities extended beyond individual components. He was responsible for overall aircraft architecture, including engine selection, structural layout, armament, integration, and system redundancy. These decisions defined how an aircraft would behave when damaged, overloaded, or pushed beyond nominal limits. As global conflict approached in the late 1930s, the US Army Air Corps faced a critical problem. Fighter aircraft were required to escort bombers over long distances, operate at high altitude, and survive increasingly dense enemy defences. Many contemporary fighter designs emphasised speed and manoeuvrability, often at the expense of durability and protection. Kartveli approached this problem differently, he accepted that aircraft operating over hostile territory would be hit. Instead of attempting to minimise this risk through performance alone, he focused on ensuring that aircraft could absorb damage and continue flying. This assumption became the foundation of his most important design. That design was the P-47 Thunderbolt. The P-47 was large, heavy and unconventional compared to other fighters of its era. Kartveli selected a powerful Pratt & Whitney R2800 radial engine, known for its robustness and damage tolerance. The engine choice influenced the entire aircraft layout, leading to a large fuselage, substantial internal volume and structural margins uncommon in fighter design. Kartveli integrated heavy armour protection for the pilot, redundant control systems and extensive structural reinforcement. Fuel systems were designed to reduce catastrophic failure after hits. Control linkages were routed to minimise single point failures. These decisions increased weight, but improved survivability dramatically. The P-47 was not designed to dominate in close dogfights. It was designed to operate at high altitude, escort bombers, attack ground targets and return despite damage. Kartveli prioritised engine power and dive performance allowing the aircraft to disengage when necessary and absorb punishment during attack runs. When the United States entered World War II, the P-47 entered service in Europe. 
its real value became apparent under combat conditions. Thunderbolts routinely returned from missions with severe battle damage, missing control surfaces, punctured wings, damaged engines, yet they continued to fly long enough to bring pilots home. Cartvelli's engineering decisions had been made years earlier, before combat validated them. His work demonstrated that survivability was not an accidental outcome. It was the result of deliberate design choices made before a single mission was flown. By the time the war reached its peak, Cartvelli was recognised not as a designer chasing performance records, but as an engineer who understood the realities of modern air combat. His aircraft did not promise perfection. They promised endurance. And in World War II, endurance often determined who returned and who did not. When the P-47 Thunderbolt entered combat in Europe, it did so in one of the most demanding operational environments of World War II. The European air war imposed conditions that exposed weaknesses quickly. Long escort missions, dense anti-aircraft fire, high altitude operations and repeated sorties placed continuous stress on both pilots and aircraft. The Thunderbolt was not designed to avoid these conditions. It was designed to function within them. The primary mission assigned to the P-47 was bomber escort. American heavy bombers required protection deep into enemy territory, often far beyond the range of earlier fighters. This mission required sustained high altitude performance, engine reliability, and the ability to remain operational for extended periods. Cartvelli's decision to build around the R2800 radial engine proved critical. The engine delivered high power at altitude and tolerated damage better than liquid-cooled alternatives. Combat over Europe quickly demonstrated the reality Cartvelli had anticipated. Thunderbolts encountered intense German flak and fighter opposition. Aircraft were hit frequently during escort and ground attack missions. Instead of catastrophic failure, the P-47 structure allowed many aircraft to continue flying. Damage that would have disabled lighter fighters was often survivable in the Thunderbolt. The aircraft's radial engine played a central role in this survivability. Unlike liquid-cooled engines, which could be disabled by a single puncture, the radial engine could continue operating despite significant damage. Pilots often returned with missing cylinders, oil leaks and shrapnel damage, yet retained enough power to cross friendly lines. Cartvelli's emphasis on structural strength extended beyond the engine. The Thunderbolt's wings, fuselage and control systems were built with substantial margins. Redundant control paths reduced the risk of total loss after a single hit. Armour protection around the cockpit increased pilot survival rates, especially during low-altitude attack missions. As the air war evolved, the P-47's role expanded. In addition to escort duties, Thunderbolts became highly effective ground attack aircraft. Their ability to dive at high speed, deliver heavy ordnance and withstand concentrated ground fire made them ideal for attacking rail lines, armoured columns and airfields. Cartvelli's design choices allowed the aircraft to absorb punishments during these missions and return to base. The Thunderbolt's weight, often criticised in theoretical comparisons, became an advantage in combat. Its mass contributed to stability during high-speed dives and allowed it to carry significant weapon loads. Pilots learned to exploit the aircraft's strengths rather than fight its limitations. Combat doctrine adapted to the machine rather than forcing the machine to match abstract expectations. Operational reports consistently highlighted the Thunderbolt's durability. Aircraft returned with extensive damage, large holes in wings, torn control surfaces and structural deformation. Maintenance crews repaired these aircraft repeatedly, returning them to service. This reduced pilot losses and maintained sortie rates during sustained operations. As newer fighters entered service later in the war, the P-47 gradually transitioned out of escort roles. However, its value as a ground attack platform remained high until the end of the conflict. Its combat record reflected Cartvelli's original assumption that survival and reliability mattered more than theoretical performance advantages. The P-47 did not dominate by being the fastest or most agile fighter. 
it dominated by enduring combat conditions that destroyed weaker designs. Cartvelli's engineering philosophy proved correct not in isolated engagements, but across thousands of missions where aircraft were damaged, repaired, and returned to service. By the time World War II ended, the Thunderbolt had established itself as one of the most resilient combat aircraft of the war. This outcome was not accidental. It was the result of deliberate engineering decisions made long before the first mission was flown. Alexander Kartveli's influence did not end with the combat success of the P-47 Thunderbolt. World War II validated his engineering assumptions, and those assumptions continued to shape American military aviation in the years that followed. The war demonstrated that survivability, reliability, and structural margin were not secondary considerations. They were decisive factors in sustained air operations. As the conflict progressed, the US Army Air Forces increasingly recognized that aircraft losses were not determined solely by enemy skill or tactics. Losses were often the result of design limits exposed by prolonged combat. Cartvelli's work offered a different model. His aircraft were designed to tolerate damage, accept operational abuse, and remain functional across repeated missions. This approach reduced pilot attrition and preserved combat effectiveness over time. After World War II, aviation entered a period of rapid technological transition. Jet propulsion, higher speeds, and new mission profiles changed the appearance of aircraft dramatically. However, the underlying constraints Cartvelli had addressed during the war did not disappear. Aircraft still had to operate under stress, endure damage, and be maintained in real operational environments. Cartvelli continued to apply the same principles to post-war designs. One of the most direct continuations of Cartvelli's philosophy was his later work on the F-84 Thunderjet and subsequent aircraft. While these designs belonged to the early jet era, they reflected the same priorities seen in the P-47, structural robustness, conservative margins, and practical integration of systems. Cartvelli did not treat new technology as a reason to abandon proven engineering discipline. Cartvelli's influence extended beyond individual aircraft programs. His work helped reinforce a broader shift in American aviation engineering culture. Designers increasingly evaluated aircraft based on how they performed across entire campaigns rather than isolated test conditions. Maintenance burden, repairability, and pilot survival became central metrics of success. These priorities shaped procurement decisions and design standards throughout the early Cold War. Within engineering teams, Cartvelli was known for demanding accountability. Design choices required justification in terms of operational benefit. Weight increases had to be earned. Complexity had to be necessary. This mindset reduced unnecessary features and focused effort on systems that contributed directly to mission success. The result was aircraft that were predictable in behaviour and resilient under pressure. Importantly, Cartvelli's legacy was not built on dramatic technological breakthroughs or radical configurations. His contribution lay in restraint. He resisted the temptation to chase performance extremes without regard for consequence. His designs reflected an understanding that war exposed weaknesses ruthlessly and without warning. Engineering. Decisions made years earlier would determine outcomes when correction was no longer possible. The long-term impact of this philosophy became clear as air combat grew more complex. As aircraft speeds increased and engagements compressed into shorter timeframes, pilots depended increasingly on machines that behaved consistently under stress. Cartvelli's designs supported this requirement by minimizing surprises and preserving control authority even after damage. Cartvelli's work also demonstrated that engineering influence often remains invisible. His aircraft did not win wars through novelty or spectacle. They did so by enabling pilots to complete missions repeatedly and return alive. This cumulative effect shaped campaign outcomes in ways that were not captured by single battles or performance charts. By the end of his career, Cartvelli had established a clear model for military aircraft design. 
He showed that success in air warfare depended on aligning engineering decisions with operational reality. Survivability, maintainability, and structural integrity were not compromises. They were force multipliers. Alexander Kartveli did not design aircraft to be admired. He designed them to endure. His legacy is found not in experimental prototypes or theoretical studies, but in the thousands of missions flown by aircraft that absorbed damage, returned to base and flew again. In World War II and in the decades that followed, this approach proved that disciplined engineering could shape outcomes long before combat ever began.